This is 51st Dates, and I'm your host, Jolie Moore. They say that hindsight is 2020. I decided to find out if that's true. Every week, I'm going to read a chapter from my memoir, 51st Dates, then give you the backstory and commentary on what really went down. It's been two whole years since I went on these dates, and I'll be experiencing them along with you as I read. We'll find out together if my future self learned anything. I don't know if I have anything figured out, but at least we'll share some laughs along the way. Dating in Southern California is nothing if not entertaining. Ready? Strap in. Let's go. Welcome to 51st Dates. This is episode 50, and I'm your host, Jolie Moore. How are you? It has been a busy weekend. It's actually Monday. Um, I usually record on Sunday, but I was out Sunday at a charity gala. It's been a long time since I've been at a charity gala. But interestingly enough, I think Saturday night, I had um, dinner with a friend. And the last time I saw that friend was the day after Thunderbolt walked out of my back door for what I thought at the time was the last time. So with, I think it was, we were out at a restaurant. We were at an Italian restaurant. She likes Italian restaurants. We were at an Italian restaurant um, sharing a bottle of wine and talking about how I was not going to go back to this guy. Um, I think she actually took my phone at dinner. Obviously, that didn't work. And so two years later, we're sitting in a different Italian restaurant where I'm explaining how um, I didn't hold true to what I had said I was going to do while we're at that dinner. Um, And that was interesting. But I'm so happy to have evolved beyond that point. You know, back then, I probably sort of knew, which is why she took my phone, that at any moment, you know, I'd be back. But I'm here in uh, 2021 knowing that I won't go back. And okay, can I even tell you, I had one of these moments last week. So I was talking to my therapist about this guy and the, just guys in general. Um, and she was like, yeah, you know, there were a lot of red flags around both these guys, you know, and it took you some time to see it. And, you know... I wanted to sort of reach through Zoom and throttle her a little bit, like, could you just not have told me and saved me some time? And I know that obviously the only way to learn things sometimes is to actually go through them, but some sort of heads up would have been helpful. Or maybe I saw the flags and ignored them. Like I spent some time thinking about that, but I can't see now how I would be in any of these relationships. I don't see how... I would have gone out with classic car guy after he stood me up um, that, for the second date. Um, if somebody stood me up for the second date, I would just write them off because clearly they're flaky because if they liked me sufficiently, you know, except for like some like emergency, I can't imagine them sort of flaking out. And then with Thunderbolt, I think I, there are, I don't know what the mistake was. I mean, I well, I'm not sure what the mistake was. I guess... I don't know what the mistake was. Like, would it have been better? I don't know how to fix that. I mean, look, he's emotionally unavailable, so I can't imagine any approach that I could have taken that would have been different, that would have changed his emotional availability. So it could have it could have gone any number of ways, and I think it would have always ended up exactly the same way. Um, you know, sort of all roads lead to nowhere. And... Um, yeah, yeah, all roads lead to nowhere. So I think the issue going forward is identifying who people are up front. And for that, I'm now of the go slowly model. I don't think I'd put in on a dating app, oh, I need to go slow because it sounds a little weird, um, like you may be emotionally unavailable. But I know now that people will show you who they are, and it's not always uh, as quick as I would like. So one of the things I keep reading about dating is that people put on their best face. And it's so interesting because I don't do that. I mean, I do get dressed. I mean, I'll take a shower and get dressed, you know, um, do my hair, whatever, um, for a date, but I don't pretend to be something I'm not. 
I don't have the energy, honestly, to do that. Like, who would I, would I pretend to be more successful or I don't know what. I can't think of what I would be that would be more desirable because I'm going to show up in the body I have at the age I am and there's nothing to do to change that. So the only thing would be trying to dazzle, razzle dazzle them. I, I'm not sure with what. Um, but I did get a lot of that from dates. The thought that people would be dishonest or, uh, well, dishonest or reticent to share like the whole truth up front never crossed my mind. So given that, um, given that I certainly will think of things differently. I mean, before this, all my dating experience had been in school where you see people, you know, like not all day, but for several hours a day for many days before you date them. So if they were going to put on an act, they would certainly have had to try it a lot harder. So I guess with like a, just a two hour window or whatever, men come at you with a lot of bluster, you know, I have this million dollar business. Okay. Anybody who says that doesn't, um, <laughs> uh, you know, I'm divorced, I'm single, I'm available, I have no drama. You know, all of that is a mask for what is, in actuality, the opposite. Um, And that I have to be cognizant of. So what I'm really looking for now is somebody who just is themselves genuinely, consistently over a period of time that is longer than a week, that is longer than a month, that is longer than a few months. And so I guess what I'm looking for is somebody who like gets up every day and is just the same and shows interest in who I am and what I do and doesn't find me annoying. I mean, look, I can be annoying, but you know what I mean? (laughs) Doesn't find me annoying up front and tells me about it. So that seems really simple. I think I had made it too complicated or I didn't know what I was doing, but now it seems fairly simple. And I feel like I have a way of filtering. So the next step is doing it. And well, I'm going to get on a plane in three days and I'm going to go away for a few weeks. And when I come back, I'm going to spend some time over the few weeks not working, probably, and just thinking about what I want. It's a new year. Um, It's a new milestone birthday. And I really want to spend some time thinking about what I want. I don't want to wake up in five or six years having done the same thing and not, not having attempted change or figuring out what may be ideal going forward. Look, I have more I've lived more years than I have left. And knowing that makes the years left kind of precious and makes it at least important for me that they be what I want and don't just default to some, just default to, you know, shopping and exercising and raising a kid. I want it to be more fulfilling and uh, more actualized. And I would like a relationship in, in the mix there, but it has to be with somebody who wants to be in a relationship, who's available for a relationship, who wants to be in a relationship with me and who can sustain for the long haul. That, how to go about doing that is an interesting conundrum that I'm going to ponder over the next few weeks. One thing I do want to share and I'll include in the show notes is that I was on a podcast last week called Multiple Voices, and I talk about both writing and dating and the memoir. If you're interested, um, again, I'll include a link in the show notes. It was interesting um, compared to some of the podcasts I did as a guest um, over a year ago. I feel a lot better. I feel like I know myself better and I'm no longer pondering some of these same questions that I was back then. So if you want to have a listen, um, click on the link. And now for the second to last date. Chapter 50, The One Man Show, January 10th. 
One of the men I'd matched with at tantric dating, I'd also matched with on Tinder. At the beginning of this week, I slowly but surely turned my dating profiles back on. I think I'd turned them off in November before I traveled to Houston for one week and Hawaii for another. I was finding them frustrating. The same issues that had been there all along somehow seemed magnified in the fall. Men don't want to meet in person. I can't stress enough how much I don't want to text or chat with someone I don't know. It's enough to keep up with people I know and love deeply. I have no desire to add unknown people who may be married, who I may never meet in person, who may be skeevy into that mix. All this to say that I was going through my old matches for the last few months, deleting those I decided weren't going to get a second look when I came across of the flautist. He'd been one of the 20 men I'd met when speed dating, he was good looking in a swarthy way. Not my thing looks wise, but I'm always trying to not be as narrowly focused on my very particular type. I wasn't a fan of the fact that he came to a speed dating event wearing a fedora, but I thought our two to five minute conversation was interesting. He has a boutique purse design business. He plays the flute and saxophone, and he's a semi-professional photographer. I love creative people, so I sent him an email post speed date, and we had a big bat and forth. I'd not made an effort to keep that up when his first ask was, could I apply my writing skills to help him with his boutique's website? Well, I love my job as a writer. I don't really have a desire to help someone I don't know well with theirs. But when I saw him on Tinder and looked at his photos, he, he'd had professional ones taken often. I gave him another shot. Me? OMG, I just realized you are tantric speed dating anyone? The flautist. Hey, I was just thinking about you. This must be a sign, LOL. We chatted on the Tinder app. A star of an HBO show was going to accessorize with one of his purses on the Golden Globe's red carpet. When I'd messaged him, he just delivered it to her and was feeling pretty good. The app conversation went well enough that I decided to ask him to go for the one-man show I'd bought tickets for that morning. Before Friday, he texted me some pictures from the red carpet with the actress sporting his bag. I was hopeful after that text, hopeful that it would be a good date with an interesting, creative person who was actively pursuing his art. I put on a dress, bought new knee-high suede boots, and made the drive to the Santa Monica Playhouse. The one-man show was put on by a comedian named Josh Sundquist, based on his book, We Should Hang Out Sometime. Before the show, Sundquist had sent an email asking attendees to send him an Instagram message with three emojis that best described our love lives. I immediately picked up my phone and sent him an eggplant, a broken heart, and a facepalm. Because I'm eternally prompt, I got to the show exactly on time. The flautist came and gave me a quick hug and sat next to me. I wanted to be more excited, but I kind of wasn't. He smelled like smoke and had too many accessories, a hat, a scarf, a bag. It was all a lot for me, admittedly a person who may be given to over-accessorizing. Fortunately, the theater opened and we took our seats in the second row. Half of the last few shows I have attended have had some kind of video projection of some kind. This was no exception. When I finally paid attention to what was on screen, I realized it was my Instagram direct message. Josh, so an eggplant broke your heart? Vegetables can be so dangerous. Are you at the show yet? Me, I'm right here. Josh, oh, right here, no way. Me, yes way. Josh, who are you here with? Me, guy in a hat. Josh, please send a selfie. I took a selfie with the flautist and messaged it. It appeared on the stage wall. Josh, I see you. You look good in blue. Who's the guy in the hat? Is he your lover? Me? No, this is awkward. First date. Josh, first date, no way. Me? Yes way. Josh, don't worry. This convo is just between you and me. 100% privacy. How's the date so far? I like his hat. Me? It's been 10 minutes. Josh, is he on Instagram? Tell him to message me. Me? He's doing it now. Josh, great. I'll let you know what he says about you. Personally, I found this pre-show display hilarious. The flautist, not so much. He was not game to go along with the humor. When Josh came out in person and asked how we met, the flautist remained quiet. I finally messed up to tantric speed dating, which earned a hearty laugh from the audience. I enjoyed the rest of the show. The flautist made snarky remarks under his breath. After the show, he wanted to get some tea, so he walked over to Third Street Promenade and went to a coffee bean and tea leaf. He was frustrated with the selection of teas and the selection of sweeteners. I probably should have called it a night then. But as always, I dragged things on too long. I reluctantly chose some chamomile and sat across from him in the harsh fluorescent light. 
Last year, I regularly watched Jada Pinkett Smith's Red Table Talk. During an episode where she featured comedian Tiffany Haddish, Haddish had talked about her dick pic book. Her conclusion after observing lots of penises was this. Check a man's hands. If his hands aren't groomed, his cock probably wasn't either. Long story short, the flautist did not have clean hands or fingernails. I think that was all the information I needed. Grooming was not his top priority, though it's of critical importance to me. I could write more paragraphs about the fact that he'd had a few relations he'd had few relationships because the women he dated always found him wanting, how he was depressed about spending so much time alone, or that he'd put 300,000 miles on his 15-year-old Prius. None of that mattered. I didn't need a moment more to know that we weren't a match. I was hoping to go on a date Saturday night with another cute guy I'd matched with on Tinder. His criteria before our meeting in person was that he, we have a phone conversation. He called me several nights in a row, but I didn't answer the phone. I explained to him that I had a child and dinner and homework and helping a nine-year-old bathe. Could I talk after that, he asked. No, I told him. I didn't get into the fact that I fell straight to sleep after all that because my son can be exhausting. He called during the one-man show. Fortunately, I had the phone on vibrate. He texted on Saturday morning on the way to spinning class. Him, can I call you? What kind of show was it? Selfie included. W-I-D, talk or text. Me, one man show. He's a stand-up who did a kind of autopsy about his dating life. I'm with Soul Cycle waiting for my spinning class to start in a few minutes. Him, talk, or text. At this point, my annoyance level was high. I'd read a quote in a Jody Rempel article right about right before driving to the gym. She said, quote, we can choose when to say yes and how to say no. I decided boundaries and were in order. Me? Class starts in a few. Then I have some errands to run and work to get through today. I'd love to meet up for drinks later today. If you're uncomfortable with that without a phone conversation, I understand. But I think we're not a match. I prefer to talk in person. Let me know if you're game to me. If not, no harm, no foul. Him, I prefer in person too. Just like to have one conversation before meeting. No rush. I didn't have to read the between the lines. We were never going to meet. I'm not saying that his need to have a phone conversation before driving two or three miles wasn't reasonable. It just wasn't going to happen because it was unreasonable for me. In a year of dating, I've gleaned zero from awkward phone conversations. That's not how I was going to spend my time. I'd rather write a book. Can I tell you, I go back and forth on this time and again. There are a lot of dating sites that suggest for women at least, that they should have a conversation with guys before they go on a date, like a phone conversation or now post-pandemic a video conversation. And I think the video conversation is kind of interesting because at least you can see what they look like because God knows they don't look like their pictures. This guy, and I still don't get this, sent me, oh, I should probably go find my phone. Every time he texted me or called, he would send a selfie. And I'm like, why are you sending pictures of yourself? Like to this day, I don't understand why men send selfies. Like the dick pics I get, that's inappropriate, but I think I get why they send those. But sending a selfie is like really weird. I don't, I, I actually, I just don't get it. I don't take a lot of selfies and I don't send them to people. So I don't quite understand. Should I have had a phone conversation with this guy? I'm not sure. Well, I guess, you know what? I think probably doing a phone conversation would have established whether or not chemistry but what I found in having conversations with guys and I had a few at their request was that they were really awkward and weird on the phone and that I still went on the date anyway and the date wasn't any better so I'm not sure what can be gleaned from a phone conversation I might be more amenable to a video date because at least I can tell that their pictures are seven to ten years old and I won't be walking around somewhere in LA looking for some like you know guy who looks 40 when there's a guy who looks 55 who I'm really meeting on the date. So I don't know about that. I'd have to think about that. Um, But I thought it was a fair boundary, but I really didn't want to have it. And I told him that I was busy, but he did like call every night for like four or five nights. Um, No, I'm sorry. I keep thinking about that. I just don't know where I landed, but I didn't end up seeing him. And then who knows, I promptly, I don't know, did Christmas holidays or something right after that. Or if it was January, who knows what I did. But it was not in any reasonable request, but he was, he was actually more pushy 
than I thought necessary for somebody that I didn't know who I'd met on an app. I wonder if I met him on OkCupid or Tinder. Who knows? I mean, I'm not sure what we would have talked about in the phone conversation. I'd picked a place to meet because God knows these guys can't ever pick a place to meet. And um, it was like in between where we lived. It was, I don't know, like on the corner of La Brea and like Wilshire. So like only a couple miles from here. He lives south of there. So only a couple miles from where he was. And I thought I would drive two miles, have one drink. And if we got along, fine. If we didn't get along, I would get back in my car and drive two miles home. Um, but he wasn't game for that. And fair enough. So I hope he met someone. Um, he was kind of cute, had long hair. I'm not sure he had a job. And I feel like he was probably way too young for me anyway. But in the future, I have to think about what pre-screening techniques I'd have. I don't know about phone conversations because I'm kind of chatty and um, their awkwardness, I sort of, and I don't do this in person, but on the phone, I feel the need to spill in the, fill in the spaces when men don't have anything to say. And I don't know if I want to do that. And I don't know if I want to have a video conversation because then I have to find a place in my apartment um, where I don't like where there's no pictures of my kid and all that um, to have the video conversation. But I will think about all of this over the holiday break. So with that, I wish you well. I will talk to you next week. Next week's actually the last chapter in the book. And we'll talk about where we go from there. I'm Jolie Moore, and this has been 51st Dates, the podcast. If you enjoyed listening, I hope you'll share, rate, and review it on Apple Podcasts. It will help others find the craziness that is dating in Southern California. Also, please hit the subscribe button on your podcast app. If you'd like to read ahead, my memoir, 51st Dates, is available wherever books are sold. A link is always included in the show notes. I'm also a romance writer. If you want to know more about my books, please visit joliemore.com for more information. You can also follow me on Instagram at xojoliemore and on all social media at the same handle, xojoliemore. Thanks for listening, and I'll be in your ears next week.